Hello and welcome to Easy Maths. This is a second video on the concept of higher purchase. And I intend to take you through the procedure for calculating the rate of compound interest when you're given a question uh, where you're supposed to look for the rate of interest uh, in a question of higher purchase. And therefore, let's turn to, to, the, to the concepts. Before us this question, we told the cash price of a cooker is 9,000. A customer bought it at, uh, by paying 15 monthly installments of um, 950 shillings. So determine the rate of interest. Now in the previous video, we said that the rate of interest normally is assumed to be compound interest and therefore it follows the formula of um, uh, compound interest. In the same video, we also say that whenever we're not given the deposit, when we, the question does not have a deposit, we, we consider the cash price to be the principal or the borrowed money. See, like in this case, since the person which was supposed to have paid 9,000 and goes away with the cooker and the price, the debt is cleared, it means that the person borrowed 9,000. But this person ends up paying 15 times 950. So that is the amount, but he borrowed 9,000. And therefore we progress as follows. The cash price in our case is uh, 9,000. Say that that's the principal or the borrowed money but the higher purchase price or amount is 15 times 750 and therefore that is a 14,250. This is the amount that he actually pays and therefore now we can put the value in the... Now the interest in our case is 14,250 minus 9,000 9, sorry which gives us this figure here and again we're not going to use the 5,250 anywhere in our calculation. We need to understand that the rate of interest normally will be arrived at using the formula of common interest where we normally say a is equals to P times in brackets 1 plus R over 100 raised to power N. Now, A is the amount that the buyer will actually pay. The 9,000 is the amount that the person has actually borrowed, but pays 14,250. And therefore, we progress as follows. The first step, divide both sides by 9,000, where we get 14,250 divided by 9,000. After the equal sign, everything remains as it was. At this point, we don't use logarithms on both sides, where we have the logarithm of this fraction before the equal sign is equal to the logarithm of everything else after the equal sign, as it, see, as it is here. Again, we need to bring the 15 down to be before the logarithm, so that we have log of everything we had here, just the same way here, but now we have 15 logarithm of 1 plus r over 100. What do we do next? Divide by 15 both sides, where we have... Uh, log of 14 250 divided by 9000 all of that divided by 15 is the same as log of 1 plus r all over 100. please notice that 15 is dividing the logarithm of a fraction now i suggest that at this point students should now use the calculator don't use it before here the reason is um, um the figures you get in your calculator say for example when you have divided 14 250 divided by 9000 look for logarithm of that we could be tempted to copy the figures, uh, say, in a book or something, and then copy back to the calculator and operate. That way, we will reduce an error because there are so many decimals and you might not copy all of them. Therefore, just type on your calculator 14,250 divided by 9,000, you get a figure. Find the logarithm of that, you get a figure that appears on your screen. Divide that by 15 and you get this figure here. Now, at this point, we're going to say that um, the 1 plus r all of 100 is the anti-logarithm of everything before the equal sign. This big decimal that is on your screen. Actually, it might be bigger. It might have many more digits than the ones that you have on your screen. Therefore, uh, therefore look for the anti-log of that and you get the answer to be 1.013111. Um, I've used uh, many decimals to improve accuracy. In this case, the value of r is going to be... Um, sorry, we take 1, the other side, so that you have this what we have before the equal sign minus one gives us this figure and therefore we have a 0 0.03111 is r all of 100 so what will be the value of r i'll be you just multiply by 100 both sides you get the rate of interest per month will be 3.111 but normally we look for rate of interest in terms of a year so we don't normally use months we use a year therefore just multiply this by 12 you get the answer to be that 7.332 percent per annum and therefore if the person who was supposed to have bought the cooker by just paying 9,000 going away with the cooker pays using 15 monthly installments of 950 and therefore this person is actually paying an interest of 37.332 percent 
in a year. And that brings me to the end of the second video on um, higher patches. Uh, let's look uh, for the next video, which I also have more complicated questions, well, similar to this, but again with additional concepts. Um, please like, share, subscribe. I will always appreciate. Thank you.